x squared minus 1 all over all of x plus 1 equal to x minus 1? Now this is a good question. If people are just learning about algebra, I would be inclined to let them get away with saying yes, they are equivalent. And the reason, of course, is that x squared minus 1 over x plus 1 all multiplied by x plus 1 is equal to x minus 1 multiplied by x plus 1. And we can cancel and cancel here. And x minus 1 times x plus 1 by the difference of two squares is x squared minus 1. So the right hand side is the same as the left hand side. And I'd be tempted, if people are just learning algebra, I'd be tempted to let them get away with saying that. But at this level, when we're just starting to learn about calculus, we can't let people get away with that. The answer is no. These two statements are unequivocally not the same. OK, so why not? Well, let's consider what happens when x is equal to negative 1. x is equal to negative 1. So let's just plug that number in. Negative 1 squared minus 1 divided by negative 1 plus 1 is equal to negative 1 minus 1. OK, so negative 1 squared is 1 and 1 minus 1 is 0. So we have 0 on the top. And we're dividing by negative 1 plus 1, which is 0 on the bottom. And that's equal to negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So 0 divided by 0 is equal to negative 2. Oh, well, yeah, I suppose you can say, if we bring that 0 up and say negative 2 times 0 is 0, true. But then anything times 0 is 0. So, for example, we could say... Um, 0 is equal to minus 5 times 0, or 0 is equal to 10 times 0, or 0 is equal to pi times 0. So 0 over 0 can, can be absolutely anything. In algebra, we say 0 over 0 is undefined. So what we've got here, we've got undefined is equal to negative 2. Well, that does not make sense. That is a contradiction. If we allow people to get away with saying 0 over 0 is, is something, if we allow people to say if we have a 0 on the denominator, then we can just move that up and then multiply, then we can use that false reasoning to prove that 1 equals 2, or that 2 equals 5, or that 10 equals a million, or whatever. So I'll tell you what, if you want to... Um, if you want to believe that, since I don't believe that, you can give me a million pounds and I will give you one pounds in return and then we're equal because you believe one million is the same as one. It isn't. Clearly, they're not the same. So the left-hand side is not equal to the right-hand side. If we want to make the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side, we must stipulate that x is not equal to minus 1.
Okay, minor technicality, I hear you say. No, it's not a minor technicality. It's actually a fundamental principle from which calculus grows. Let's have a look, at, or let's sketch a couple of graphs. Let's first of all sketch the left-hand side. So x squared minus 1 over x plus 1. So we're going to have the, when x is 0, we've got minus 1 over 1 and minus 1 over 1 is minus 1. So when x equals 0, we have our y-intercept and that's at minus 1. And then when x is um, 1, we have 1 minus 1 is 0 divided by x plus 1 which is um, 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. So 0 over 2 is 0. So when x equals 1 y is 0. And we're looking at an x squared term divided by an x term so we're going to be looking at a linear term. So we know we've got a straight line. So we can draw a straight line through those two points. But as we've already looked at, what happens when x equals minus 1? So when x is minus 1, we have a gap because it's undefined. It can be absolutely anything. And we show that there's a gap here. We say that this function is not continuous. It has a break in it. Now if we graph x minus 1, actually I will use a different colour. So when x equals 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, so that's the same. And when x equals, my, uh, when x equals 0, y equals minus 1, so that's the same. But this time, when x equals minus 1, minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2. So this time, this graph is continuous or this function is continuous. That's close enough. Pretend that dot is actually on the line. There we go. Okay. So we've got two different graphs. One has a hole in it and the other doesn't. That's why they're not the same thing. If we stipulate that x is not equal to minus 1, then we have to put a hole in this graph, and then they do become the same thing. Okay, so now let's look at this graph a bit more detail. So what happens when x is say very very close to minus 1 but not exactly minus 1. For example what if it's minus 1.000000 an awful lot of zeros and then a 1 or what if it's minus 0 0.99999 and an awful lot of 9s and then terminating at a 9. Well then we will line up perfectly on this line. So as x approaches minus 1 from both sides we get closer and closer to negative 2 as the ultimate answer. 
Now this is what the concept of limits is about. So this is something new. We've got the limit as x approaches minus 1 of x squared minus 1 over x plus 1 is equal to minus 2. So I'm actually going to fill that gap in in a different colour to show that this is not a real value. It's, it doesn't exist. That This value is undefined. But if it wasn't undefined, it would be logical to assume that this line carried on straight through. So if this function was continuous, it would go through this point. But in fact, it isn't continuous. So this is what we mean by the limit. What we mean is that even though this is undefined at x equals minus 1, the limit as we approach minus 1, as x approaches minus 1, this function approaches minus 2. OK, this is a very important concept uh, I forgot to mention. Limits allow us to draw conclusions about how a function should behave at the point where the function is not defined, only if the limit is the same when approached from both above and below the point of interest. OK, I think that's probably about all I want to say on limits for this lesson. I'll leave you with a question as normal. And then in the next lesson, we'll develop this principle a little bit further uh, as we try to answer the question we set ourselves in Lesson 3.